In today's video, I'm going to break down exactly how you can set up a master inbox for your cold email campaigns so you have one central place where all your replies will come in. What I'm going to cover in this video might be the difference between you booking 20, 50, or even 100% more calls for the rest of time, and that's not an exaggeration. If you watch the video all the way to the end, you'll understand exactly why. So if 20, 50, or 100% extra difference in the amount of calls you're booking through cold email will change your business, then keep watching. All right, so diving in, the first question you might have is Matt what even is a master inbox why is it important and why should I ultimately even have one the main reason is is because if you're following the best practices you're doing cold email properly you should have multiple inboxes set up across multiple domains if you have no idea what I'm talking about or I'm just speaking gibberish you should go watch a different video where I kind of break down the whole process but effectively if you're setting everything up properly you should have multiple domains and then multiple inboxes under each one of these domains so for example here you have five domains and we have 10 inboxes and in this example, we're saying it all to a master inbox. And the reason why you'd want to do that is because if you aren't doing it, that means you'd have to log into all of these inboxes individually. So let's say you're sending, I don't know, let's just throw a number out in the air, 50 emails per day from each one of these inboxes. If you are sending 50 emails out and then people replying, you're going to have to log into inbox one, check the replies, log into inbox two, check the replies, log into inbox three. This is a total nightmare. This makes it harder for you to respond fast. It makes it harder for you to just kind of even do anything at all. So the way that you get around this is you just forward it out to one central master inbox. What this will allow you to do is just have one place where all your replies can be handled, where you can either you yourself or you have someone on your team can just sit there and respond to all the emails as they come in instead of having to manually log into all the accounts, sift through all the stuff, basically do that there. So there's two ways you can set up your master inbox. It's either a manual way where you're kind of using Google or Outlook or whatever email provider you're using to set up an inbox that's kind of separate that you can use to reply to emails, or you can use the sending tool. If you're using an up-to-date sending tool, a lot of them have master inbox as part of like their feature set. And so it's kind of a native integration, which can be good in some ways and bad in other ways. So kind of just breaking down what this even means. So yeah, the manual way, you might have all these inboxes here, and then you can make a separate Google or Microsoft account, or you can just use one of these sending accounts and make that your master inbox and use their native forwarding feature. And then yeah, the sending tool option, this is where you'd use a sending tool like Smart Lead instantly all these tools kind of have a native feature now where they call the master inbox that's a lot easier to set up and then I can show you kind of the pros and cons to each so the manual way of doing it and what I'm going to really talk a lot about in this video there's some pros to it the main pros is that the replies you're going to get are faster say for example you're using Google and you're using their forwarding feature where you can forward an email to another email account that process is near instant if someone says hey I'm interested that'll forward over to your master inbox in minutes or even seconds which is really really good Time to lead is one of the biggest differentiators if you want to make sure you're getting meetings booked in. And that's what I was kind of referring to at the beginning of the video. If you are responding slowly to the people that are interested, the chance of them booking drop like significantly. I think there's a study, I can pull it up somewhere on the screen here now. So most of the replies that you book massively increase by the, the time that you reply, but you should definitely be replying to people as fast as possible. So the manual way, faster replies. The other thing is the UI and kind of the load times are quicker because if you think like Google Google and Microsoft have been developing their email platform for the last 10, 20 years, maybe even more. The responsiveness is a lot snappier. There's more features like you can add attachments. A lot of these tools are kind of catching up to a lot of these things and it's just more reliable. The cons is it requires more setup time. You can't use sub sequences. I'll break down what that means and you can't send from the main sender. Again, I'll break down what this means. So if you're using the sending tool on the other end, it's basically everything inverted. You can leverage sub sequences and I'll kind of break down what a sub sequence is. So let's say for example, example, you have a person who says that they're interested in your product or service and you send them over an email. You said, yes, awesome. Let's chat tomorrow at 2 PM. Uh, the main issue is that a lot of times they won't reply right away. Maybe they'll forget that you sent them that email and you want to continue to follow up with them. What a subsequence effectively is, is it's a automated follow-up process that you can kind of use through one of these sending tools where you say, Hey, this person responded positively. So let's automatically follow up with them for the next three days. And so you can kind of build those out in the sending tools and I'll, I'll break that down as well pros yeah you're also sending from the main sending account here in this example if this account name is jimmy at website.com and this is jim at website.com and you're forwarding it to account that is jimmy at get website.com the domains here are going to be slightly different i don't think this is too big of an issue which is why i still kind of opt for the manual way but there are pros and cons you know it's it doesn't kind of line up properly it syncs with the sending tool there's ai categorization the cons are that it's less reliable slower 
we're usually missing features. I'll kind of break this all down here in just a second. All right, so here's an example of a master inbox for one of my clients here in Google. So again, don't worry, uh, this client did agree for me to use this, but basically everything is blurred out anyway. So here's an example of what the master inbox looks like. You can see here we have a ton of emails just on our screen. But the main thing that I want to draw your attention to and what makes this kind of a master inbox is number one, the forwarding, which we're going to cover here in a second. And number two, the tagging. So you can see all these different tags. So meeting book, not interested, meeting book, out of office, not interested, interested, not interested, out of office, sample, whatever. You can use all these tags. So inside of Google, it's called labels here on the left. You can simply just press create new label and add your own. Or in Microsoft, it's called, I believe, tags. Same thing somewhere in the top settings bar, you can just like add a tag or add a label, I think is what it's called. And all you have to do to add that is you can just press the plus bar, please enter a new label name, and then you can create it. Again, super simple. That's all you have to do to set up like the tags and make all the filters so it looks proper. But that's how you can like sort and filter the inbox. So if I press here on the left here and press interested, again, not going to do this. I don't want to make a ton of work here for my editors. But if you press interested, meeting book or not interested, I can see in with one click of a button, have all of the interested people that have responded just pop up directly on my screen. So that makes it super simple. Pro of this is that it's near instant. Whenever someone replies and it gets pushed over to this email, you have one dashboard, the emails come in near instant. There's one login you need to use and you can just press in here and just see everything from a high level. Yeah, so all you're gonna have to do to basically set up this uh, structure inside of Google or Microsoft is you just need to log into all the accounts and set up so it forwards over to this one account. So let's say for example here, uh, you have inbox one, inbox two, inbox 11. So let's say this account is called Jimmy at getwebsite.com right? This is what you want to make your master inbox. And then you have inbox one, two here. So let's say on the other hand here, you have Jim at gowebsite.com. And then you have Jimmy at gowebsite.com, right? So this is your inbox one and two. So all you have to do to set this structure up properly is log into Jimmy at gowebsite.com and then forward it. Make sure the forwarding is set up to Jimmy at getwebsite.com. Same here, Jim at gowebsite.com, forward it over to Jimmy at getwebsite.com. And then here in this master inbox 11, this is what you're gonna be setting up with all the tags and basically everything I showed you here before. So let me show you how you can actually just go in and like press the right button so you can do this yourself. Do this yourself. I'm gonna walk you through the exact settings. The settings for doing this with Microsoft is practically the same. All you have to do is like the exact place where the buttons are is gonna be slightly different, but the, the same structure basically applies. So you're gonna go over here in the top right into the gear icon. You're gonna press settings and then you're gonna press see all settings. Now it's gonna take you over to this screen where you're gonna have general labels, inboxes, accounts, and all this stuff. The main thing you're gonna wanna go over here is to forwarding and pop slash IMAP. Again, in Microsoft, it's gonna be slightly different. The name is gonna be slightly different. And you're gonna press this button right here, add a forwarding address. Going back to our diagram, you are in one of the inboxes that you want forwarded over to the master inbox. You're gonna press add a forwarding address. And this is where you're gonna type the master inbox name. So I think our example, we had uh, jimmy at getwebsite.com. This was the master inbox we wanna use. You press next here and then it's going to pop up with a dialogue and it's going to say are you sure you want to do this you press okay it might send a confirmation over to your master inbox for you just pressing like yes i want this sent over and then over here there should be a button that you're going to press and it just says like enable sending so that it sends over to the master inbox and that's all you have to do the next thing you want to might do too is under this filters and blocked addresses button you can create a new filter this is where you can filter out warm-up emails so for example if you're sending warm-up emails and they have some sort of word here that says warm up or something, then you can press create a new filter. You can add a filter here where it says has the word warm dash up in it, create filter, and then you can have it. It skips the inbox, marks it as red or deletes it or never sends it to spam. You can press all the filters here, create the filter, and then that's going to make it so much easier. So that's basically everything at a high level. There's a little bit more detail, but honestly, it doesn't really matter as long as you're setting it up to your needs. But there are features and stuff inside of Google and Microsoft to allow you to basically filter out the warm-up emails just like that. All you have to do, go into the settings, press a few buttons, make sure that if it has a certain words in the email that it archives it or sends it to the trash, and then you're all set. So that is exactly how you can set up a master inbox for your cold email campaigns. Cover two options, whichever one kind of works best for you, you can use. Like I said, towards the beginning of this video, you're gonna be able to reply a ton faster because you're actually gonna have one central place where you can respond to people. You can get 20%, 50%, 100% better results because again, time to lead is super important. Having said all of that, just having a master inbox set up won't mean anything unless the rest of your cold email campaign is dialed in. You need to have the 
right offer, the right landing page, the case studies, the domain set up properly. You need to have everything on the lead list side set up just to name a few things that go into cold email campaign creation. So if you want any more content on that, you can press and watch the other videos in the channel. And if you're like, hey, Matt, that sounds like a ton of work and you want us to handle it all for you. So for example, if you're running a B2B company, you want us to just book all the qualified calls on your calendar. You can press the first link in the description, book a call. If you qualify, we can have a chat, see if we can help you out and kind of manage everything and set everything up for you. If not, no worries. You can just check out the other free content on this channel. Either way, appreciate your time. Appreciate you guys so much for spending uh, your time out of the day watching these videos. Either way, I will see you in the next video.